What's going on, Jerome? It's a beautiful Friday afternoon in the great state of Minnesota. Do you know it's 45 degrees out? Staring down the barrel of a 45 degrees. It's kind of stupid how that gets us excited. Anyways, uh, Vikings Friday news dump. Uh, let's get this thing going. So, of course, uh, Kirkywood, Jerome, Ezeko, Cousins, as well as RG3 have a very interesting relationship. RG3, the number two overall pick in 2012 by the, the well, the team is now known as the Washington Commies. And Kirk Cousins was like an afterthought as a fourth-round pick coming out of Michigan State. Uh, but eventually Kirk took RG3's gerb. through uh, his but no hard feelings. I mean, RG3 and uh, Kirk have said a number of times that they're cool. Like maybe they're not BFFs, but I mean, they certainly do have uh, mutual respect. And RG3 has some professional respect for Kirk Cousins because he likes that. And so he did up uh, a list this week of the top five quarterbacks in the NFC. Jalen Hurts, one, have no issue. Kirk Cousins, two, yes, speaking the truth. And then, I mean, Dak, Kyler, Geno, sure. But so many people put Dak above Kirk. No. Put Kyler above Kirk. Absolutely not. Put Geno above Kirk. I mean, first half of the season last year, sure, but the rest of it, meh. Or old-ass Matthew Stafford. Or system quarterback Jared Goof. Yeah, they try to put him above Kirk Cousins. Nah. Uh, so respect RG3 here for, again, speaking truth uh, and, and all that stuff, even though Kirk took his job. <laughs> uh, pretty Ricky Spielman, former Vikings general manager, uh, is working now in the media for the 33rd team as well as CBS Sports. And <laughs> this is funny, man. So, you know, part of this was Spielman dunking on some national media drone haircuts like Pete Prisco, even though Pete has no hair. Uh, but also the... So some of this is him dunking on him. Some of this is just professional ribbing since they both work at CBS. So it's funny. Prisco, talk about all the pro days. Talk about practice. Uh, just like Stroud, Bryce Young looked great against the pressure and blitzes he faced today. Really adjusted to the speed of the DBs he faced. These pro days are useless. So of course, Prisco's talking about there's no pass rush per se. Uh, there's no DBs at a pro day. And then Rick Spielman, who is a tender pro day or two in his day. Poor Pete. He has no idea how important these pro days are. If Pete doesn't care about pro days, why is he watching them on TV? Pete doesn't understand the draft process. He needs to evolve and please learn the game. <laughs> All right, so part of this, I'm sure, is you know colleagues ribbing each other. Uh, but part of it is, I'm sure Spielman, now that he's in the media, uh, just he wants to take out his aggression uh, on, on some of these uh, jabronis that have hated on him for years. And I mean, the pro days are important because you get to see how a guy. Uh, acts and reacts in real time. You get to see him interact with his teammates. You get to see him uh, interact with staff and stuff like that and just talk to him. And also, there's a difference between just watching tape, even though tape is very important, uh, and then seeing it in, in, in real life, where especially especially with linemen. Like, so tape, you get an impression of the player, but once you see them in person, you actually realize how big or how small they are. You realize how quick or how not quick they are. You realize if they play with leverage, you realize the strength uh, once you know coaches work with them on the field, get their hands on them. So pro days, very important. <coughs> Even though the only quarterback to ever have a bad pro day was Teddy, and then Spielman drafted him. Yeah, all that. Speaking of quarterbacks, so Chris Sims, uh, former Texas participant uh, as well as uh, NFL participant. So uh, Chris Sims on NBC Sports, uh, every single year he does uh, up his quarterback rankings. Now, famously, it's just off tape. So it doesn't take anything else to account. Just what does he see on the film? And this year, uh, he's got C.J. Stroud in Tier 1 by himself. He's got Hendon Hooker at number 3 in the same tier as Bryce Young, uh, probably factoring in height. And then you got Tier 3, uh, Anthony Richardson. Then Tier 4, DTR, Dorian Thompson-Robinson, as well as Will Levis. So what's interesting... DTR on the same level as Levis. DTR seen as a on an early day three prospect. Will Levis is seen as potentially top ten. Richardson is probably going to go top four. Hooker may go top forty, top fifty. Although some people may think uh, end of the first round. Whereas Bryce Young could be number one overall. Uh, but also I, I like that he's on the CJ Stroud uh, hype bandwagon. Now everyone everyone has an opinion, and even though Chris Sims. Obviously knows the quarterback position, playing at a high level in college, participating in the National Football League. Uh, I mean, sometimes you just get it wrong. You know, back in 2021, Zach Wilson above Trevor Lawrence, uh, Kellen Mond above uh, Justin Fields. Although, Kellen Mond, if he got – no, no, it's over. 
It's over, man. Uh, Ole Udo, something that's not over is Ole Udo is going to be back in purple in 2023. Uh, Gessling's reporting that his deal is a four-year qualifying option contract, which pays him $2.5825 uh, $2. million for 2023, while counting just $1.2325 against the cap. Now, it's uh, the qualifying option, it's a offshoot of the void year, so the Vikings are spreading out some cap hits. So I think the Vikings are setting themselves up for one more big move. Well, we know it's not DJ Chark who, who just signed with the Panthers, but sort of is what it is there. Um, I don't have a smooth transition. So Kirk Cousins, uh, pride of Michigan State, was watching his alma mater, Michigan State, play Kansas State in the Sweet 16 game, one of the best college basketball games I've seen in a while. Uh, Kansas State ultimately prevailed, so sad day for Sparty. But Kirk Cousins, apparently the TV went out. TV out, but we are making it work. Go green. First off, Kirk Cousins wearing the old school Timberwolves shorts. Love it. Also, is he wearing that with a polo shirt? That's a dad look, man. Come on. He's probably wearing the crispy white New Balances, too. But a <sighs> couple things. Number one, how is there only one TV in the house? Like, I'm sure that Kirk has a very nice house, right? And also, Kirk has earned enough money to have, I don't know, multiple televisions in the house. Or maybe this is a... They don't want so many screens in the house around the children. I fully understand that. Uh, that that's definitely a, a, a rich parent problem to have. My kids are on tablets all day long. Uh, but I don't know. Like, again, how does Kirk not have a backup TV? That that old thing. But they're, they're watching on a little iPad. Or, or is the Microsoft Surface because they're official sponsor of the National Football League? Who, who really knows? But it's a nice kitchen. There you go. Uh, then, lastly, so NFL UK. They had a well-meaning uh, debate they want to put out there. Who are you taking? Retweet for Stefan Diggs, Hart for Justin Jefferson, and Jefferson is destroying in a landslide. Well, uh, he had 3,600 likes versus 141 retweets. Now, there's a couple things here. With the new Twitter algorithm, likes appear on people's timelines a lot more, but all the retweets is just sending out the message to uh, your entire followers. So, you would think that inherently retweet has an advantage, hence why you know these these polls throughout the years are very heavily skewed towards retweets. But I mean, you're having a, a, a guy in Stefan Diggs who's up there in age, has a big time contract, wants to get traded every single year versus Jefferson, even though yes, he's still on his rookie deal, uh, is extremely young, as well as he's already wide receiver one in the league, even though he's going to get paid. I mean, it's a no brainer. It, it really is a no brainer. Like I like Stefan Diggs. Love, loved me the Minneapolis Miracle, but we got out at just the right time. And using that draft pick to parlay into Justin Jefferson, it's a win-win-win no matter what, man. But uh, that is it. Uh, that is the Friday Vikings afternoon news dump. Let us know your thoughts and our thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Most put the work, put a little something in the Venmo. But to next time, Skull Production Value.